both t is bigger than 2 pi. Okay, so that's it. All right, um, so now we need to solve for the constants. We have the initial data u of 0 is 0, and u prime of 0 is 0. Okay, that's going to let us solve for the constants in the first part of this piecewise function, so c1 and c2. Okay, so um, again, on the interval from 0 to pi, we get that u prime is... So it ends up being negative c1 sine t plus c2 cos t plus f0. And we're told that this is 0 at 0. OK, so that's the derivative. Let me plug 0 in. u prime 0 is negative c1 sine 0 plus c2 cos 0 plus f0. And so um, sine 0 is 0, cos of 0 is 1. We get c2 plus f0 is 0, implying c2 is negative f0. And what is c1? Uh, well, we'll plug uh, 0 in for u. I don't know why we plugged into the derivative first. Usually you do it the other way around, uh, but nonetheless. Let's plug 0 into u. We know c2 now is negative f0. Okay, So u at 0 is c1 cos 0 plus c2. So that's minus f. Let me erase this here. Minus f 0 sine 0 plus f0 zero times 0 equals so sine 0 is 0 so the last two terms are 0 we get c1 equals 0 okay so what we get is that again on 0 to pi we get u equals um, so it is c1 is 0 Okay, so at c2 is negative f0, we get negative f0 sine t plus f0 t, which is f0 times t minus sine t. Okay, so maybe I'll go ahead and uh, place this up here. So we get f0 t minus sine t. OK. OK, so now let's use the endpoint on that interval to solve for the, so the endpoint being pi. OK, so the value of f or u on that endpoint should match the value on the endpoint for the second definition here. So according to the first definition, what is u of, so on so let me just I'll just say this instead of write it but I'm gonna plug pi into u with this definition here and that value should match when pi gets plugged in to this definition here okay so t is defined at being pi uh, when using this definition but if we take the limit as t goes to pi here we want that value to be the same as um, this function evaluated this definition evaluated at pi Okay, so um, we get u of pi is f0 pi minus sine pi. Okay, um, so what does that give us? Uh, sine of pi is 0, so this is f0 times pi. And then u prime at t is f0 times 1 minus cos t. And so u prime at pi is f0 times 1 minus cos 
pi, which is f0 times 1 minus negative 1, which is 2f0. Okay, um, so we get the values at the at when we plug pi in. Okay, um, so let's see what we have next. Uh, well, we want to solve for um, these are essentially are serving as our initial conditions now for solving for the constants d1 and d2. Okay, u of pi is f0, f0 pi. pi. And u prime of pi is 2, is two f0. f0. So let me write these at the bottom, bottom here. here. Okay, okay, so we so have, have u, u of pi, of pi is, is pi times f0, f0 pi. Um, u prime at pi is um, 2 times f0. And we're going to use these to solve for d1 and d2. These are the initial conditions for this second formula. OK, so according to this second formula, u of pi is d1 cos pi plus d2 sine pi. Sine pi is 0, cos pi is negative 1. So we get negative d1 is f0 pi. And so d1 is negative f0 pi. OK. Okay, um, oh, so we forgot about, aha, uh -huh. so I missed that there. Let me go back for a second. So that was right, but we have the, of course, we have this part here. I just forgot to, to write it. So it's plus F0, 2 pi minus pi. Okay, this is D1. Cos of pi is negative 1. Sine of pi is 0. And then it's plus pi times F0. And we're told this is equal to pi times f0. And so canceling pi times f0, we finally get that negative d1 is 0. And so d1 is 0. OK, d1 is 0. What about d2? Well, let's take the derivative. We know d1 is 0. So in that case, the derivative of u, again on the interval from pi to 2 pi, is going to be d2 cos t plus f0 times negative 1. And then u prime at pi is d2 cos pi minus f0. Um, so we're solving for d2. Cos pi is negative 1, so it's negative 1 minus f0. And we're told this is equal to 2f0 down here. OK, so we end up with, sorry, so this is negative d2 from here, minus f0. OK, so we get d2 is negative 3f0. Okay, so d1 is 0 and d2 is that. Let me, again, I'll write this up here. So d1 is 0, d2 is that. So we end up with negative 3 f0 sine t um, plus f0 times 2 pi minus t. OK. All right. Next, um, the last constants. So we're going to repeat the same process. We're going to plug 2 pi into the endpoints of this formula. Or so into this formula, 2 pi is the endpoint of the interval on which this formula is defined. And then we're going to plug, um, uh, use those as initial conditions for the formula on t bigger than 2 pi. OK. So what we have, uh, so u equals 